They call him the Rolling Thunder. High octane. Full throttle. The legendary Saturday Night Heroes. Generations of skill and decades of rivalry has given rise to these champions. Born into the rolling thunder, racing is in their blood. Twelve times a year, these rock stars are summoned to test their wits and their guts in heavy metal, high octane action. Stars of the Dirt Oval, these drivers put their life on the line for the next victory. There can be no friends on the dirt. With the start of an engine, blood, sweat and tears become reality and history is written. Drivers, cars, racing. This is Dirt Track Oval. This is Heavy Metal Thunder. This is Saturday Night Heroes. Lene, uh, if, if you do or don't know or haven't heard about Saturday Night Heroes already, um, basically, just quickly, it's about drivers the cars the history the track stock car racing that's what that's what we're trying to promote um so and and we wanted to get you on the show just to talk to you maybe to see who you are what you drive um where you stand what you think about stock car racing um you know that type of thing just to get your perspective and if you've got any interesting stories that would also be super awesome so um first question i suppose is is who are you what do you race and and yeah the floor's yours Okay, my name is Lionel Liebenberg. I'm 28 years old. I race at Victory Raceway Pink Rods, Pink Rod Class. I race a uh, City Golf. Uh, we like to take everything out, just the roll cage and the body. And uh, yeah, it's a, just actually the Pink Rod Class at Victory Raceway. Okay, but now hang on. I, I'm, I'm sort of getting into the whole stock car racing thing. And when I moved to Port Elizabeth, which wasn't very long ago, um, it's the first time I've actually heard about the Pink Rod Class. So what is that? The Pink Rod Class is established at, okay, it was actually started in Cape Town, but then Victory Raceway started it in the Eastern Cape. We race for charity, for kids with cancer, uh, people that can't afford the medical bills. So we get all the money together on a race day. Then we give that money to them or anything they need we will get and we will give it to them. We also like did the drug to help for the farmers. We got 70,000 rand for them. Uh, so yeah, we actually just want to help the less fortunate. Oh, okay, that's oh, geez, that's it's a very noble cause. and It's actually something nice to do because I'm sure you'll get quite a lot of support for the racing and, and people generally like supporting um, the less privileged, if you want to say. Um, I mean, that's nice. And now you mentioned Cape Town. Uh, did you originally come from Port Elizabeth or you said you were, you were originally from Cape Town, right? Yeah, I'm originally from Cape Town. I live now, I think, four years in Utenaik. So I'm still a newbie actually in the Eastern Cape. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and did you previously do racing in Cape Town? Or, or did you attend racing in Cape Town? Did you grow up into it there? Okay, my dad has a track in Cape Town, Tigerberg Raceway. Your, your dad owns a racetrack? Yes, Chris Liebenberg. That is... Awesome. So I actually, I grew up with it. <laughs> okay, so yeah. You, yeah, you you were brought into racing that way. I really wasn't expecting that answer, that, that your dad actually owns a racetrack. Yeah, he that owns is, it and he races at it. Geez, just thinking about this now, we need to have your dad on the show. At some <laughs> yeah. stage, we need to have him on the show. Um, okay, so, so you, well, tell us a little bit about that, that track in Cape Town then. Uh, it is the widest and longest track in South Africa, uh, the biggest that you will get. There. They have also the late models that come from America that they get in from there and then they race it here. That's the class my dad races in. The late model, so also V8s, right? Yeah, it's, it's V8s, but it's like 800 horsepower. 
which is quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit more than what we use yes. or what we race here. Uh, a lot more than I use. <laughs> okay, yeah, true. But um, I, I take it you're trying to move that way at some stage. He wants me to, but I'm still, you know, I, I can't race with him in a course. Uh, yeah, no, no. Sure, I suppose. <laughs> um, okay, no, that, look, that, that's very interesting. Eh? Uh, and then well, well, you moved to Port Elizabeth and then started racing in Port Elizabeth then? Yes. At Victory. Th- then I got actually the chance because at my dad's track, I'm only working. I do the point scoring, the event organizing, the secretary of the day, um, everything. I actually go now once a month to their races and I go and work there. Okay, actually, so you do a lot of traveling yeah. then as well. <laughs> okay, awesome. And then, so, so at Victory side now, which is of course the, um, the racetrack here in Port Elizabeth, or one of them at least, you are also on the committee, I believe. Yes, uh, they voted us in the driver's vote, who they want on, and they voted us in, like for me and a few other people who is drivers, they voted us in to be on the committee. Okay, awesome. So you're actually staying within, I mean, kind of in the family, a running race tracks and being part of everything that's happening, not just being race drivers. It's just, it's part of you. Yeah, like I know all the rules and how it must go and how the organizing goes and what the drivers feel and how I'm also one. So I know how their heads work. So I can give input into committees on how to do what and what they will have to do to make the drivers happy and all that stuff. Okay, no, geez, that's, that's quite nice. I'm sure we're going to definitely speak to you at a later stage, um, maybe track side or, you know, at, at some stage, a little bit more about, say, rules and how do you get into the type of thing. Uh, but we'll leave that for another video. Uh, what I did want to ask, though, is, uh, as you, I think you said, you started in pink roads. Yes. So specifically, what car do you drive? Uh, Volkswagen City Golf. Okay, a, a 1600 or is it a modified? Uh, yeah, it's a 1635 CC. Uh, it's not 1660 yet, but we are allowed to go till 1660. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, and, and reason being that you got into that class is the Pink Rods only VW 1600s, or are they allowed to be various other cars? It can be a space frame, but there's a lot of in between technical rules that it's not allowed to. We actually work on the 1660 rules, the 1660 class rules. I believe you are ranked in like the top three SA female drivers in this class. Is that correct? Yes, SA2, yes. SA number two. Yes. So that requires, uh, I take it, a fair amount of skill to become SA number two. Uh, like I said, I, I was born into it. So it's not like, okay, it is skill and you must, your head must be keep cool like the whole night because there's a lot of bumping on our night on Nationals was a lot of bumping and they put me in the first heat, they put me twice in the tyre after like each lap. They put me in the tyre, then I went around, they put me again in the tyre. <laughs> so, and you've come back from that? Yeah, my lower control and everything was bent. We tried to fix it because we had an extra heat uh, towards what the other classes had. So we were like after each other the whole time. So we didn't have much repair time, you can say. Jeez, okay. And then they didn't see, my crew didn't see I was in the other wheel. So they didn't know about the other side of my car that got damaged. And I keep telling them the car doesn't handle right. <laughs> and then afterwards they saw, oh my word, you went into that tire. Oh, so now all, the, all these repairs are like actually happening between heat tracks, not track side in the pit area. Yes. I mean, you, you're doing everything there on the side. Mm. I was like staying in the car, uh, putting the brakes on while they changing the stuff on the wheels and Jeez, you know, that's stressing a lot. And, and I believe that's generally how the stock car, well, any racing goes when there are minor corrections that need to be made. They they fixed in the pit area, so you've got yeah. you've actually got a mechanical team of people, whether it's family or friends, or you actually run a commercial team. Yeah, they, my, my main people are Oki Tradesman and Ali. Has Oki been with you for, for a long time? Or? I started in 2017 in December, then I bought a car in Cape Town. But I only like raced that car I think two or three months. Then uh, I asked him for help and then there was a lot of changes that needs to, needed to be made on the car. So he just said, okay, let's just build you a new car. So I sold that one and we uh, built, bought, yeah, he built a new car for me. Engine, the body, everything he built. And uh, yeah, since then he was just by my side. Oh, nice. He's the only one that touches my car, works on it. Okay. So, um, and, and I mean, he knows what he, it sounds like. He knows what he's doing. He knows. Everybody knows he. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, that's awesome. Now, uh, you know, that's uh, SN number two is, is a fairly big accomplishment. I don't. I mean, you, we can't really trump that at the moment. But have there been any other smaller accomplishments, uh, wins, that type of thing, leading up to? Your biggest? Yeah, I'm two times now in a row, two years in a row, uh, club champion. 
Okay. A club champion at Victory Race. Yes. Okay. And best prepared car also twice in a row. How does what is the whole best prepared car thing? What is that about? Best prepared car is like the car that not only looks the best, but like my car, I've never since I've been racing not finished the heat. So yeah, it needs to be consistent, of course. Yeah, yeah. not like so um, I, some <laughs> other people around the corner there that I know that. Yeah, I've their been cars finishing every heat if I race. I don't stand in the middle of the track. Even if like my CV my CV joint broke, so I even got back on the track and I finished the race. I didn't know it, that was broken, so I was just like, just go on. Yes, yes. <laughs> but I mean, that's generally, I think that's the key, yeah, is consistently, consistency um, throughout the whole race and the season, which you may not be the fastest, but consistently you are fast. Yes. Yeah. By the way, if anybody's ever wondering, oh, there's a lot of background noise happening here. We've got a compressor gas spraying uh, behind us. We've got a, a wonderful, uh, we love South African load shedding. Uh, we wish there could be more, not really. Um, there's a generator going in the background. I oh, hear there's a forklift hoster thing happening here. So if any of you are wondering, there's a lot of background noise. That is what's happening. Um, we do apologize for that. <laughs> we'll try and make the best of it. Um, yeah, just having a look at my little script here. <laughs> Your seasons, um, I want to ask, of course, the, the season has just started. I mean, it's we just, uh, we're probably 10th, 11th, 12th of February now somewhere. Um, so how is this season going so far? For me? For you, yes. I haven't started. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, are you going to be starting this week, Saturday, the 15th? No, I'm starting March. Uh, March. My car was a little bit damaged after the National. So we are doing the whole body over and everything brand new. So I'm coming with a new new look and new car. And okay, you are starting now later in the season. Is that going to like affect your standing um, because of the whole consistency? You have to attend or take part in like X amount of races. How does it, that it can affect me, but if I just race hard and I am consistent every race like I was in the past, I maybe can take I can pass those are in front of me because they can also break in the year. Sure, oh, that's, that is that's true. That's what we, that how we think. <laughs> <laughs> tactical, tactical. Um, and then the previous seasons, like last year, I mean, uh, of, of course last year is very recent. How did that season go for you? Oh no, very good. I was racing every race, enjoying it. I uh, ended first. Uh, yeah, I didn't have, yeah, there wasn't really mistakes or broken car. Okay. Yeah, the engine never gave me problems since I've been racing, so... That's, it's brilliant. It's, it's, it's actually great to hear that. Um, you know, I was talking on the side to one of the other drivers and uh, of another class, and he was saying how little he had actually spent over the year for breakages because the car just doesn't break, and I take it that you also in the same boat. Yeah, no, I've, all that I've replaced in two years was a CB. <laughs> that is, uh, that's impressive. That is impressive. So. No, okay. Um, and... Man, I was going to ask. Oh yes, um, something that I've been asking. Yes, this bloody hoster. What is, is that a hoster? It must be a forklift. I don't know what these guys are doing. <laughs> okay, no, that's fine. Anyway, um, let's not get soundtracked here. Uh, something that I've been asking all the drivers. What goes through your mind when? It's like a three-part question. What goes through your mind when you are in the pit area? You're pulling on your gloves. You're putting on your helmet. You're starting the car. Um, first part. Second part is, say, let's say you're going around, you're doing that sighting lap and everybody's now bunching up um, for the actual start um, for the green light. So as you're rounding that round corner, what is going through your mind then? I take it you're normally in front or towards the front. And then um, also on the very last lap, so when you, you're getting onto the straight, you see, you know, one, uh, I think it's the white flag. If I'm yeah, the last lap. Uh, what is going through your mind then? Just enlighten us a little bit. Okay, when I climb in my car, I'm normally dead quiet when I race. I'm on my own. I'm in a zone. <laughs> I don't speak a lot to people. And I climb like two, two classes before me, I climb in my car. Because I don't want to be in a hurry. Like strapping and everything. Then I just sit in my car, I pray. And that we all are safe and we all come safe off the track. And then I just wait and say, oh, well, I just hope nobody puts me in the wall or something like that. Because it can get a little bit hectic in our class. The girls are a bit wild if they want to be. <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's good. Good competition. Yeah, and if I'm on that lap before we start, I'm just like, okay, I, the one in front of me, I must make now a game plan here to pass. <laughs> so, but normally I do that before the timeline. Then I'm like, right, okay, this one is in front of me. I, I know how they pull away. 
So, so I'm so like, very strategic in, in your planning and uh, in the way you race. Yeah, if you know somebody that's still new and it's not fast on the pulling away, then you're like, okay, you hang a bit back and you just go right past. This, this is so interesting. I mean, I've spoken to, again, a, lot, a couple of people on the, on the side and, you know, there, there's so many different views. Like, we just go foot flat as fast as we can. No, I'm not going to go foot flat and go through somebody. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> a, but, but you, you, you seem to be very strategic about the way you manage the race, actually. Um, and, and then when, you, when you're out, you're doing that sighting lap, all the cars are bunching up. You know, what's going, are you getting excited then? Is the adrenaline starting to rush? Or you? I actually don't think of anything. It's just like, I must just go collected. now. It's just we must we must pass everybody now. And are you normally in that first sort of uh, pace row, that first one or two cars, or are there sometimes that you are actually all the way at the back and you end up having to pass? Oh, I have sometimes bad luck where I always pull at the back or in the middle. They like drawing me in the middle. So. <laughs> and and I, I believe also, I mean, the front wheel drive cars they they stick to their race line. It's 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 quite difficult to pass. Um, Yo, I, I mean, like you, the you're in that boat. Line. You like the outside line? Yeah, because then I can just go past the outside, but if you're in the inside, you can't go over the tyres and over the infield uh, and passing them because that's not cheating, actually. Yeah, well, it would be. <laughs> um, so. Okay, yeah, outside line, cool. Uh, but you, you obviously have to have uh, quite a fast car because it's, you're travelling a lot further around the track compared to everybody taking the inside line. Which yeah, I think it doesn't. Your yeah, fast car does matter, but also how you handle it. Like the first two will be now against each other, but more to the infield. So you know you have that gap on the left, on the outside, to like pause them because they are going to battle it out, and you just take the gap. Yes, <laughs> this is this is way more uh, strategic than I thought it was going to be. And then uh, again, you do the whole race and everything, provided everything goes well. Hopefully, it normally does. And you see that white flag come up. You in front. You know what I want? What I think? Just get done with it. <laughs> can it Very just finish? Very consistent lap. <laughs> yeah, can it just finish? <laughs> oh no! So, so overall, it sounds like you, you're quite a very cool, calm, and collected driver. Yeah, no, they have bumped me before, and I don't get mad or something. It's just sometimes, you know, it's just like more than once in one lap, and I will get like, "Why are you doing this?" <laughs> <laughs> I see some of the some of the guys get uh, quite aggressive sometimes. <laughs> no, I've I've actually never got aggressive. Only on, on the national, where the girl didn't want to give my place back. Then I was like, give my place back. I'm like next to her. Then I'm like going like this with the car, because <laughs> I know the rules. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then I'm course. like, I must get my place back. So, so you use them to your advantage. Of course you must. And then she doesn't wa didn't want to. And the track was like so wet. So I just gave like a lot of fuel. And then I was like sliding, but I accidentally slided against her. So it looked like I was like bumping her out of the way. And you weren't penalized for that because it was still like really skirting the rules, I would imagine, but within yeah, the rules. Yeah, but I didn't. They, I think they took it to the acknowledgement that I didn't do it on purpose. It's the wet track. Okay. Cool. Oh, well, that, that's good. <laughs> that's excellent. And where are we going to from here? Of course, your se the season has started, but your season specifically hasn't started. Um, what are you hoping for for this upcoming season? Though? Uh, this season I'm just taking it as is because I've proven to myself and, and people that what I can achieve. So I'm just taking it to enjoy it. I'm not going for the club championships actually. I'm not going for that stuff. In I the mean, back of your mind I'm sure everybody wants to win again. Yeah, you want to win but I'm not going for that end of the year points actually. Sure. I just want to enjoy it. Okay, no, well, which is, I mean it's a fair game. You know, you, if, you, if you're trying to be at the top of your game all the time and you're pushing hard and hard Sometimes it doesn't actually work out. Yes. I, I, want, I want to improve more on my skill in racing because I want to move to a bigger class. I don't want to stay in that class for like years. So what is the next class? I mean, of course, the, 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 I would imagine the peak is going to be um, the V8, but you're not going to move straight into a V8, right? No, I, I will go to, I will like race my car and I can only do that in 1660s, 2.1s or hard shots. So I'll have to pick and choose, but the 6 and 60s are a bit of a hooligan, so... <laughs> I, I tell you, sometimes I've been to quite a lot of races and when there's a big field of 1660s, jeez, it is, it's unbelievable to watch. Yeah, I um, think you hope you get a live out. Yes, I, I tell you, I, there was also one at another racetrack that I watched and it was, it was unbelievable how competitive it was. Um, okay, so, so you, th those are the classes. Now, once you, to step up from there, uh, are you eventually going to go into, say, like a 2.1 2 modified class, or the, the heavy metals class, uh, or, or once you've got to where you need to be, uh, you know, the biggest or the, the largest cars that you can drive in your class, 
Well, then you're gonna, then you're gonna try and take a big jump. Yeah, I'll, I'll eventually race late models, cause and at Tigerburg I also wanna race. That's my big dream, cause it's my dad's track. I've never raced there. Okay, in a fun race against radio people, I raced, but not like in a competition race. So, uh, okay, uh, of course you, you do all of your racing now at, at Victory. Um, so, is your plan then eventually to move back down to Cape Town to be based at his racetrack? Uh, no. Not. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you just want to travel there, um, do your racing, and then yeah, I like go back. once and go and race there for the fun of it, and just to have that experience behind me because he's the biggest track. And have you, have you travelled uh, and, and raced at any other tracks around South Africa? Yeah, we went to Wooster, to Bloemfontein, George. Uh, I'm, I'm very bad luck at George. What <laughs> happened at George? I'm interested. My first now. race, I accidentally wrote somebody off. That is, my yeah. whole, my, my first race. I'm glad it was accidentally, not It was. <laughs> it was really accidentally. And t so tell me about the, the George racetrack then and, and you know, the people there. Or did, did you enjoy the place? Yeah, they, it's very nice there. Like the, the, like you say, the spirit or whatever. It's very, very nice. The people like partying <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> and it's, it's always like, a good thing. Yeah, and it's like, just, it's, it's enjoyable. Everybody gets together before the time where we stay. It's actually near the track. So we all care and... And now afterwards, uh, let's say the class that you race in and then generally the drivers, do they, they're quite competitive when they're racing against each other. But then after the race is finished, is everybody good friends or how does that work? In, in our class, it's like me and Bianca and Anushka, we are really good friends. You can say like we are like very, very close. Uh, we are competitive with each other, but we won't bump each other and stuff like that. We will like say, okay, you are next to me. Go, or if you are faster than me, or something like that. But okay, me and B, we bump a bit, but we call it racing. <laughs> she like gave my no. first mark on my, on my on my new car. Oh no! On the first night. <laughs> well, it, at some stage there was going to on the first night. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. But at some stage, of course, there was going to be. That. But we were laughing and, about it. And after the events, like socially, is we we party friends? together. Yeah, we. We enjoy ourselves with each other. There's no hassles between each other. And is that a general thing amongst all the drivers, or is that are they little? Not really. Is, no, it, not is, really. is it quite competitive? You will get people that won't be with each other, but it's not actually a lot. Normally, everybody gets together and everybody chats and everybody gets a drink together. It's just nice. It is just if that gate opens and it closes, there's no friends. Yeah, sure. I suppose. Yeah, that, that's true. Um, it is racing up. Yeah. And. Um, just circling back around to your father, um, I believe also he's got something to do with Do For SA. What, yes. what is that? He's the owner of Dirt Over for South Africa. He bought the rights at Motorsport South Africa. So we run basically all the paperwork, admin and everything of all the tracks. So they must get permits by us and all that stuff. So, so he's, I mean, he's, he's really deep into racing. Yeah, yeah no, it's his life. And and so, so this, so I was wondering what the, the do for you say, dirt oval for you say. It makes sense yeah. now. Um, okay, so so um, MSA Motorsports South Africa has nothing to do with the no, oval sport racing. Anymore. We we make the rules in our oval racing and all that stuff. They don't in, get involved there. We only do our licensing and public liability at MSA. Okay. Um, and I mean, any other stories that you want to share with your about your dad or about his racing, like in the when you grew up with him there, trackside? Anything interesting? Oh, no, he he just yeah, he learned me the things, and he actually didn't want me to race. He actually, I, I bought my first car with him not knowing. I I raced my first race, and then I sent him a picture afterwards about the car, and it's actually I have his race number. Okay, which is ninety nine number ninety nine. No, actually, same as Peter. <laughs> okay. Uh, how does that work? I, I mean, how, how are you allowed to have the same race? Yeah, you have one number in every class. Oh, in each class. Okay. Yeah. So we are all different classes. And uh, yeah, and then I sent him the picture, and he was like, "Oh, that's a nice car. Whose car is that?" And I'm like, "It's mine." <laughs> Did almost, you really now go and buy a car? It almost sounds like a, a naughty child, uh, you know, their parents say, you will never have a motorbike. Yeah. And then they come home, Dad, check it out, I bought a motorbike. Yeah, and, and it was actually Nali that gave me the opportunity to race. He bought my first car for me. So, yeah, and then now he can't get it out of me. And so, so now your dad is supportive of everything that's... Yeah, yeah, he comes and watches my national races and all that. And now, look, I can't remember if we did touch on this right in the beginning, but... Um, your dad is, I take it, he's fairly good at racing as well. Yeah, he is multiple driver. SA champion. Multiple SA champion. Okay. 
for, for his class, of Yes, his class, yeah. Which is basically the top class of drivers anyway. Yeah, he was. He was a V8 driver when they didn't have late models. And then he went to late models when he now brought the cars in and stuff. Jeez, oh, that's... I, I can't believe it's, it's so deep in the family. But that's awesome. I mean, it's... It's actually I, just me and him in the racing, in the family. In the family, yeah. yeah. And, and you get a... I mean, would you like your... If you are going to have children or something no, down the line... No, they must start racing they, when they're six. Really? Yeah, no. Right from the beginning? They must start. <laughs> Oh, no, look, that's 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 awesome. Um, also, you know, I, I wanted to ask you any challenges you want to issue for this year to your fellow drivers. Like what? Like I don't know. Like I'm coming for you. Be careful, or, yeah. or I'll give you first place. There, now, there's a lot of there's a lot of new drivers in our class, so you can't really be so intimidating to them. <laughs> Because then they don't want to race there. Yeah, yeah I, I suppose. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of them, oh, a lot of the ladies don't want to race against us because they say we're wild. But you're not really wild. Well, no, you, you're racing. You know, it's just that's... it's 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 like a woman. If if somebody upsets somebody, that there's going to be a catfight. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then you take it out <laughs> on the racetrack. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually I, I'm I'm a decent driver. Well, as you said, cool, calm, and collected. I don't, I don't really bump and stuff, but you're not going to bump me twice or three times. Then, yeah, th- then you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, th- this friend of yours, uh, what did you say her name was? Be funny boy. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you wanted to have her on at some stage. I, I heard something down the line. I wonder if we should have a chat to her. I think you must. <laughs> she will entertain you. <laughs> <laughs> She's also the winner, a winner of Nut for Nut. Serious? Yeah. Okay, so just totally off the racing topic there. Music, winner of Nook, that is that's impressive. Yes. Um, no, look, wonderful. Anything else you want to add about the racing or, or something that I haven't touched on maybe? No, it's just my, we can thank our sponsors that always help us, like RDVE Engineering, he's my biggest sponsor. And that's specifically for your car? Yeah, that's, okay, he actually helps a lot of people. He sponsors Pita, he sponsors Anushka, or actually he doesn't sponsor, he helps preparing a car. And like um, Oki prepares my car, Oki trades my racing. Um, but he puts the money in my car if it needs to be, uh, RDVE. <laughs> and any other sponsors you want to mention? No, that's I only that's, have the two it. people. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully that also grows down the line, you know what I mean? Uh, so. No, you, you, you hope for it, but uh, the last few years it's actually not a lot of sponsors that people are struggling so yeah i suppose yeah the whole the whole economy is yeah. done, but we'll keep racing <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh, leone I just almost said leone i must <laughs> leone i've got to get this right um thanks very much for being on the show um you know for taking up your time i, I know you were waiting while we were setting up here quite a long time <laughs> um, but re- really thanks thanks for you know sharing your time hopefully we can chat to you trackside um not not in your pre-race sort of setup stage, um, but you know, so, sometime at the track we'll we'll chat to you again. Oh, before the time I'm calm, they work. <laughs> I said. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's actually a good idea. We'll watch them talk about them still yeah. a bit there. Um, no, really, thanks thanks very much for coming on to the show. And just to end off end off on a, on a light-hearted note, yeah. There's three questions we're going to ask every driver now. Okay. The first answer that pops into your head, I want you to, I want you to tell me what that is. It's lighthearted, nothing serious. Um, I'm actually having a senior moment here. I can't remember what the questions are. <laughs> Where's the script? Oh yes, thanks, Rudy. Okay, who's the best driver? The best driver. I don't know. Three, what two, class? One. Who's the best driver? My dad. There we go. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, that'll be. And you said his class was the late, late models. Late models V8s. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Um, Toyota or Ford? Toyota. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> well, I suppose uh, yeah, it's other uh, other Toyota or Ford, but uh, definitely. Toyota chose of Toyota Ford. So. <laughs> you said it, not me, and I'll stick to that. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, lastly, front wheel drive or rear wheel drive? What do you prefer? I forgot the first one. I think it's rear wheel drive. No, <laughs> we race front wheel drive. Front wheel drive. But <laughs> you're going to move into the rear wheel drives when you go to V8, which is hopefully not too long in the future. Yeah, uh, we'll take about two years. <laughs> one day at a time. One yes. race at a time. <laughs> Leone, there uh, I did it again. Leone, thank you very much for being on the show. It's we'll a pleasure. Chat to you soon. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> we'll end it there. Cheers.